So really, genetics in a lot of ways started in, in animal agriculture. For example, artificial insemination that was started really frozen semen in the 1950s is kind of when it really took off and had a lot of genetic progress since then. And we've basically doubled the milk yield of dairy cows since 1960, and the majority of that is due to genetic selection. So really, we've selected pretty intensely in dairy cows, and most of what that involves is, um, is farmers collecting records on how much milk their cows give, and then those records flow into a centralized database, and it's a statistical procedure to determine which bulls have the best daughters. And then the bulls that have the best daughters, we use artificial insemination. So for example, there are about 9 million dairy cows in the U.S., and there's really only about 600 bulls that will breed uh, about 7 million of those cows, and then the other 2 million will be bred by farm farmers' personal home bulls. Yes, we've had a, a, a project where we actually went out to dairy farms and uh, collected um, intakes. So we measured how much feed the cows were eating because it's very easy to measure milk production and then send that information into a centralized database. It's a lot more work to measure how much the cows are actually eating. So we went out and actually measured how much the cows were eating so that we could kind of get a measure of how feed efficient they were with the idea in the long term that we would develop tools to help limit how much we're feeding our cows to try to reduce corn usage, for example. What's surprising to me is how much genetic variation there's been and how much genetic change we've been able to make with the cows, and yet we know we still have a long ways to go. There's a uh, world record cow that made 72,000 pounds of milk just last year, and the average cow only makes 25, 26,000. As we say only, which is still, that's five times beyond what she would, a natural wild cow, would be expected to give. So we, we have a long ways to go before we maximize how much milk a cow can give. So what's impressive to me is how much genetic variation there is in milk production. So for the consumer of dairy products, the idea is the more efficiently that a farmer produces milk, the uh, more cost effectively he can bring milk to the consumer. So as he is more efficient, it costs less to make the milk, so it helps control prices for milk in the stores and so forth. And we also re reduce the amount of land that's being used to make agricultural products. So and with a growing human population, that's pretty important to get more milk, more products as we can out of a smaller land base. So from that dimension, that's where genetics fits in.